All right, all right. Order in the court. Order in the court. We've got a big case we've got to figure out here in the next few minutes. Carter versus Caitlin. Let's go. Turn that volume up. You know you want it. It's time for Women's Basketball TV with former NCAA champion, WNBA champion, business mogul, and national TV personality, Fran Harris. Asia Wilson is a generational talent. We have no one like her in the WNBA. Bringing you entertaining on-point analysis. Did LSU just win the national championship? Tea and inside scoop on this sport you love. NIL is going crazy. All I'm saying is if they're making $5 million as a student athlete, can't they pay for their own college? I mean, I'm just asking. It's just a question. Let's get it. All right, so everybody saw. Everybody's seen the story that's buzzing all over the internet. We know that Kennedy Carter is the nemesis. Caitlin Clark is the nemesis. We've got a story here where we are featuring what many people believe is the superhero versus the villain. And depending on which side you are on, we don't know who's the villain and who's the superhero. <laughs> Do you like what I did right there? So let's ask the question, what really happened between Kennedy Carter and Caitlin Clark? There's too many C's. First of all, there's too many C's in this conversation. Kennedy Carter and Caitlin Clark. What really happened? So let me give you a little perspective. I was actually at a family reunion this week, so I've been off the grid a little bit. And literally just before I was about to play basketball at my family reunion, my cousin slid on the floor. I was putting on my sneakers. He flashed his phone and it said something about Kennedy Carter and Caitlin Clark. And so I started to investigate in the few minutes that I had before I had to get on the court and beat my cousins. And I said, interesting. He says, what do you think? I said, I want to know what happened before Kennedy Carter did what she did. I said, I don't have an opinion because I don't have enough context. There's not enough context with that picture that you're showing me from social media for me to make a decision about how I feel and whether I want to take this case to sport court or not. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, that doesn't mean anything. Kennedy's and I saw the video I saw the picture and I said that doesn't mean anything then I saw the video I said that still doesn't mean anything to me yet because I don't have the context for what happened so the context is this what happened the play before what happened the 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 uh, three plays before did Caitlin do something that viewers didn't see because it wasn't so blatant as Kennedy Carter did Kennedy Carter, has she been egging it on all game long? And Caitlin had had enough, and then Kennedy blew up and did what she did right in front of the ref and right in front of millions of viewers. What happened? The reality is, y'all, nobody knows except Caitlin Clark and Kennedy Carter. I know that's hard for some of y'all to believe, but nobody, not even all their teammates, know exactly what happened before the moment that was heard around the world. Before the foul that was heard around the world, nobody knows what happened. Y'all have heard me say this on this channel many times. There's so many games going on inside the game. You got people pulling short. You got people punching you in your head. You got people elbowing you. You got people pulling your hair. You got all this stuff happening that y'all don't see. You may catch some of it. You may, you may see some of it. But it is impossible for you, the viewer, to see every single aspect of what's going on in the game, inside the game. Okay? I was in college. Stuff was happening. In the pros, overseas, stuff is always happening that y'all don't see and you don't know. But then let's face it. There's a very good chance that Kennedy Carter also had had enough of whatever had been going on inside the game the game inside the game, there's a chance that Kennedy Carter, as I said, and Caitlin Clark have been joined and, and messing with each other all game long. There's a chance that none of that happened. There's a chance that Kennedy Carter was just like, I'm tired of hearing about Caitlin Clark. There's a chance that Caitlin Clark said, you know what? You ain't shit. You ain't nothing. I don't give a care. There's, there's a chance for all of that. But what's interesting is the take that the media is taking on it. It's your girlfriend, Harris, former WNBA champion with the Houston Comets. 
It is finally here. Yes, the first novel set in the world of the WNBA. And it's got all the good stuff. It's got love, romance, true crime, forgiveness, redemption, all the stuff you love to see in great novels. If you love Terry McMillan and Waiting to Excel, if you love Eric Jerome Dickey and all his madness, then you will love Houston by Morning. It's a story of four characters, a baller, an agent, a television personality, and a coach. And the way their lives collide into one another is a beautiful mess. Pick up a copy now on Amazon Kindle or at HoustonByMorning.com. Peace! That's what's really interesting. So now you want to paint one of them as the villain and one of them as the the superhero. It's a classic, it's a classic Marvel superhero movie. One person is the superhero, the other person's got to be the villain. When they both could be the superhero and they both could be the villain, depending on how you look at it. Some of y'all have taken the tack that Kennedy Carter, oh, she has to be the villain because look at her history. I call BS on that. I do. Again, I'm a context person. Give me the context for why this person did what they did. And then some of y'all have taken the tact of Caitlin Clark can do no wrong. Caitlin Clark is always on the up and up. Caitlin Clark is forever the example. I call BS on that. Now y'all, some of y'all didn't watch Caitlin Clark play in, in college for the last two years. Y'all when we put together, string together a highlight or low light reel of Caitlin Clark's worst moments. Y'all want to see that? If you know the context of the people involved in the superhero movie, then you can start to broaden your thoughts and your ideas about what actually happened as you were watching the cartoon, the WNBA cartoon, the superhero cartoon over the last three or four days. Most of y'all will not admit that you really don't know what happened. You may have seen the blow up. You may have seen the glow up. You may have seen the get up. The get up from when Caitlyn got pushed. You saw the blow up and then you saw the get up. Right? You think that's all that happened, y'all? You think that's all that happened? Of course not. And then some of y'all, well, now y'all gonna say, well, I noticed that Caitlyn Clark's teammates did not pick her up on the floor. You think you know all that that entails. Some of you have decided that yeah, they're glad that Caitlyn got knocked down. Some of you have decided that Caitlyn deserved to be knocked down and not to have her teammates pick her up. Some of y'all have decided that. Some of y'all have decided that because Angel Reese was applauding on the, on the bench, that now it's a plot. It's a conspiracy theory. Everybody's out to get Caitlyn. Oh my God, save the world. Everybody's out to get Caitlyn. Most of us have a different reality. And if you have played in this league, then you know it is extremely physical and it's only gotten more physical. Listen, I was there at the beginning, 1997. It was physical in 1997. It's only gotten more physical. And there was no Caitlin Clark or even one like Caitlin Clark in the league 30 years ago. So don't tell me that this league is overly physical. It is the same league as it was in 1997. People get knocked on their ass. People have vendettas. It's the same thing. The style is the same. It is a physical league. It is a contact sport. And if you think that people are going to take it easy on someone because they signed a $28 million shoe deal, because they signed another $10 million, Allstate, whatever it is, if you think people are going to take it easy because there is this sense that she has put the WNBA on the map, you are absolutely nuts. And by the same token, if you think said person is going to keep taking crap from people in the league, whenever it shows up, you are also crazy. Y'all, here's the thing as I wrap this up in the next minute or two. This league needs rivalries. This league needs competitors. This league needs people who will stand up for the, the league that they built, the shoulders that they stand up on. We need 
People who come in like the rookie class this year who bring something different that we've never seen before. Can we just all agree that we have never seen anything like the level of media attention that we are seeing in 2024? Can we all at least agree on that? And that brings some pluses and that brings some minuses. It brings some pluses and it brings some minuses. People are talking about everything we do in the WNBA now. Some of y'all have been here since the beginning. Some of this is not new and some of y'all are not new to the WNBA, but we have never, ever seen anything like the level of attention and media exposure and money crossing hands and exchanging hands as we're seeing in the WNBA right now. There are pluses to that. More exposure, more people looking. The minuses to that, more people criticizing, more people you know, hating, that's, that's, that's a part of it. That's part of the growth of the WNBA. But I, what I refuse to participate in is this notion that anybody who plays a certain player hard, straight up, competes. I refuse to, to buy into that those people have something extra in store for said person. I also refuse to buy into the BS that any person who comes into the league, no matter how highly talented they are, are going that they're going to save the WNBA. The WNBA does not need saving the day. The WNBA is the best women's basketball league in the world with the best women's basketball players on the planet with or without certain people. Collectively, the W is that. We still got some work to do. We got some things we need to fix. These officials need to to catch up sometimes in these games. These players need to get better. We need to, as fans, fans need to start seeing the game for what it is and not what they hope that it would be and what they think their new player, their mo- their favorite player is without seeing their flaws. All of that needs to get better. So in this courtroom, sport court, we're going to talk about it. And we're going to talk about it without apology. That's what we're going to do on sport court. So what do you think? Guilty, not guilty, mistrial, innocent. Do those four terms even apply? And if so, what is your verdict? We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in to Women's Basketball TV with Fran Harris. The most provocative and entertaining women's basketball show on earth. Be sure to click that like, share and notification button so you don't miss a moment. We'll see you tomorrow.